In the northeast of Austria, 20 kilometers from the city of Linz, was one of the darkest places in the history of mankind. It was the mauthausen gusen concentration camp, one of the largest in Nazi Germany. In its beginnings, it was a single detention center, but its particularity lies in the fact that it soon expanded to become a gigantic complex of prisoner camps. People who the Nazis described as incorrigible enemies of the Third Reich ended up at this site, and they went through a hell plagued with torture, humiliation, and death. Among them was the photographer Francesc Boix, who recorded the horrors of the establishment with his camera. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you everything about the mauthausen gusen concentration camp. The story of the Mauthausen camp begins in July 1938, when a group of 300 prisoners from the Dachau Detention Center were used as slave labor to build this site. It was located in a populated area, close to a railway network, and the project was financed with money from the Dresdner Bank, the German Red Cross, and funds stolen from prisoners in other concentration camps. By October of the same year, Mauthausen was already operational and housed more than 500 inmates. Initially, this site functioned to contain common criminals, prostitutes, homosexuals, anti-Nazi politicians, and religious opponents such as Jehovah's Witnesses. Over time, British and American prisoners of war, as well as Jews, were also admitted. The number of inmates in Mauthausen grew disproportionately and, after a few months, the place was already at the limit of its capacities, towards the end of 1939 it already housed 3,000 people. So it was decided to build a new detention center five kilometers from there, in a town called Gusen. Over the years, new sites were created nearby, forming a system of 58 subcamps managed from the headquarters in Mauthausen. The prisoners in these establishments were used as slave laborers, whose task it was to produce whatever the Nazi military industry required. Arms and ammunition factories, as well as fuel and rocket plants, were built in the concentration camps. On the other hand, the geographical characteristics of the area, rich in granite, were used to develop mining operations. The inmates were also forced to work on nearby farms and in tunneling, such as the Leubel Pass, which connected the territories of Austria and Slovenia. Although the living conditions in the Mauthausen camp were always appalling, things got worse after 1942, when the Second World War was at a critical moment. It was then that the Third Reich decided to increase more than ever the exploitation of slave labor in the concentration camps, so that they would increase the production of war material. Those deemed unable to work were separated from the group and taken to the gas chamber to be executed en masse. In case an inmate was too weak to even move to the execution room, he was killed with an injection of phenol. All the bodies were later cremated in the local crematorium. The Mauthausen camp was classified by the Nazis as a Category 3, which was the classification given to detention centers with the strictest regime. The inmates were subjected to all kinds of harassment by the SS, and the sanctions were highly severe, as they sought to set an example for the other prisoners, and scare them into not breaking the rules of the place. The most frequent punishment was to flog the inmate with 25 lashes that he himself had to count aloud, but if he made a mistake or stopped counting, the lashes would start again from zero. Others were sent to dungeons, where they were confined in the dark, in cells measuring 7 square meters, where they were deprived of water and food for days, to the point that many died of starvation. Those who failed to comply with the Mauthausen regulations could also be punished with freezing showers, in which they were forced to remain under a stream of cold water for hours, causing them to die of hypothermia. One of the most sadistic punishments was that of the stairs of death, consisting of a series of 186 steps in a granite mine. The inmate was forced to carry large blocks of stone up the steps, while he was watched and beaten by an SS guard. The inmate ran the risk of fainting and being crushed by the rock or dying from fatigue and exhaustion. When Nazi officers wanted to commit mass murder, they resorted to firing squads or poison gas. As we mentioned earlier, Mauthausen had its own gas chamber, which had the capacity to kill 120 people at a time. Sometimes a high dignitary of the Third Reich, such as Heinrich Himmler, would visit the camp 
and a mass execution would be arranged for him in order to demonstrate the effectiveness of the system. In fact, the entrance door to the gas chamber had a small viewer built into it, through which spectators could watch the slaughter unfold in real time. It is estimated that a total of 200,000 prisoners were held in Mauthausen and its subcamps between 1938 and 1945, when the camp was liberated. The death toll varies according to sources, but is estimated to range from 122,000 to 320,000, of which approximately one-third were Jews. Surprisingly, a good part of the prisoners in this place were Spanish. This was because many had left Spain after the civil war in which General Francisco Franco triumphed. Opponents of the Franco dictatorship sought refuge in France, but when this country was invaded by Germany, they were taken prisoner by the Nazis, who sent them to concentration camps. A total of 7,200 Hispanics were assigned to Mauthausen, and among them was Francisco Boix. This young 21-year-old Catalan man, who arrived at the center in 1941, was saved from death thanks to his knowledge of photography. For this reason, the SS recruited him to record with his camera all the high-ranking Nazis who visited the camp, as well as any extraordinary event that occurred within it. This included the mass executions of prisoners in firefights or in gas chambers. In exchange, Boix became an inmate with certain privileges since he lived in a separate barracks and had access to objects that other inmates considered luxuries such as soap and combs. The Catalan's photographic tasks came to an end in 1943 after the German army was defeated in the Battle of Stalingrad in Russia. The SS then gave the order to destroy all photographs depicting the Mauthausen crimes. Boix, however, considered that his moral duty was to protect those images, since they were the testimony of the horrors that hundreds of thousands of people went through. With the help of other Spaniards, they managed to hide the photos in old chimneys or in barracks, where the officers could not find them. The concentration camp was liberated in May 1945 by U.S. forces, and Boix turned over all images of it to the Allies. They were used in the Nuremberg trials as evidence of the crimes of Nazism and were essential evidence to convict the leaders of the Third Reich. The Catalan died a short time later, in 1951, due to a kidney disease that he contracted during his stay in Mauthausen, but he left behind a vital legacy to no one of the darkest periods in the history of humanity. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what do you think was the most brutal punishment in this concentration camp? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.